Then your buddy Dawkins came along and said origin meant everything. So you don't need a designer. You don't need a creative mind or mechanism. And then what did Dawkins do? He apologized. And Intelligent design is literally the exact same thing as creationism. That you're I, a creationist, which means that you object to evolution by definition. Now, I'm a microevolutionist. You believe in the virgin birth of the universe. At least I have no, a woman who was a virgin. I don't believe there was a virgin. I don't believe there was I have a, a woman. I have a woman who was a virgin. You have nothing that was a virgin. Okay, but but you say that that your 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 church count, uh, encourages the questions and all of that. And yet, oh, yeah. You brought all of these arguments in favor of intelligent design saying there was scientific evidence of intelligent design, things we know to be false. When did I say there's scientific evidence for intelligent design? You said that science points to a designer. I said that it's almost impossible to do science without a mind lie. behind it. Yeah, it, it, not only is it not impossible to do science without a magic imaginary friend, it's not possible to do science with one. And so my point is, if you want to fight the creationists hard on that, then I'd agree with you because they're, not, they're really pushing hard on science. Now, they have scientific reasonings, but I'm no, sorry. the it, point I'm making is possible to incorporate your God into science. You said you can't do science without it. I'm saying you can't do science with it. And you can't give me an example where you can do science with it. Absolutely, I can. I just talked to you in my opening. I gave endless amounts of examples. I know. One, I heard your opening. By himself, and I wrote he, my notes based on your opening to now challenge you on how flawed the opening was. You can't use not. the opening as justification of itself. You were wrong then. You're wrong to defend it now. You no. can't use, you can't say that science points to a designer because it clearly does not. Science. There has to be something that gets this whole thing going. When Darwin if wrote was, Origin of the Species, he was not talking about origin of the universe. Origin of the species was specifically things, people, inside of space and time. Then your buddy Dawkins came along and said origin meant everything. So you don't need a designer. You don't need a creative mind or mechanism. And then what did Dawkins do? He apologized. He apologized. And he said, based off of spe especially the fine-tuning argument, he might become a deist. He said that last summer. Uh, so no. for you, I would get to that point of understanding, Dar sir, sir, I am fully on board with Darwin. I'm fully on board with evolution. But this whole Excuse idea me. that it's all just about science and that you don't have to explain any type of origin Got and it. making me look silly – that I'm saying that everything in our experience, obviously, if there is a big bang, you're going to look for a big banger. If someone's about to bang my door shut, I'm going to look for a big banger. Everything in your experience says that there's something behind it all. Call it God. Call it the spaghetti monster. Whatever you want to call it. Need to call there's it something most likely that's not what it is. there. That, and in that instance, you're right. I cannot scientifically prove that one. Absolutely not. Okay. But that's my point. The origin of the species Darwin never meant to even talk about origins of the cosmos, and Dawkins completely twisted it. So every single person in the U.S. now thinks that that was exactly what Darwin was talking about. I don't defend what anybody else allegedly said, so I don't care what Dawkins may or may not have said. He said a few things I don't agree with, so I don't care to you know to defend everything anyone ever said. When they agree with me, then I'll defend it. Maybe you're parsing the two in a different way than I am. Okay, let me clarify. ID and Intelligent design is literally the exact same thing as creationism. I know they lie about that. They want to say that it's something else. And I'm not that. Was, yeah. But it was proven in court. Intelligent design is creationism. They're exactly the same thing. Creationism is a rejection of evolution specifically and of methodologicalism, excuse me, methodological naturalism by extension. And you have argued against methodological naturalism in your opening statement and for intelligent design, which means that you're a creationist, which means that you object to evolution by definition. I, no. Okay, if I don't ever know said, what words mean. Let me clarify. If I ever said intelligent design, I apologize. I, I uh, was well, you, talking you, about You argued designer. for irreducible complexity, which is the intelligent design argument meant to promote 
creationism. And the reason they changed the name to intelligent design was because it was a criminal criminal conspiracy to get around the law against teaching religion in public schools. So in the 1987 Supreme Court ruling against teaching creationism or teaching religion in public schools, they had a, a textbook called a pandas and people that used to say that, you know, this is, you know, creationism and it gave the definition for what creationism is. And, and then they changed it with a macro command because it's all on computers. They changed it with a macro command to change creationism to intelligent design. So then the word creationism became intelligent design, but with the same exact definition. So that a, a superior intelligent being, a supreme intelligence, created magically all of these things without having evolved. That's what intelligent design is. It is literally creationism. And the irreducible complexity arguments are arguments that these things cannot have existed the way they are. Yeah. They haven't. They can't Adaptation. have come into position right. nat by natural means. They have to have been orchestrated by an intelligence magically. We now know that every one of those arguments are flawed. So I would disagree. Historically, I would agree on what you, you shared there. But no, I think I think you can absolutely have irreducible complexity and fit that in even to evolutionary theory and being an evolutionist. It's an argument I, I think against it's a, evolution. So you're no, saying no, no it, it is against, against evolution it. Fits it's against it, but theory. it's against it in certain at certain times in certain places, like with the eyeball or like with the cell now. But that doesn't mean you just erase all of adaptation, mutations, and evolution. No, I would totally disagree with that. Okay, well, I, I'm a little confused as to how you're 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 advocating for intelligent design and criticizing methodological naturalism, but you say you support evolution. That that you you, you you're contradicting your own definitions. Or you're, I would your macro own... micro evolution. I'm talking about I'm a micro evolutionist in terms what is of micro evolution. I, I allow for selective adaptation and changes within the environment, within species, but I'm not and a random, macro evolutionist in the sense of there is no God. And so there's no room for the immaterial, the transcendent. You have to explain everything materialistically. And that's why I think when it comes to the moral argument, reasoning, rationale, when it comes to things like love, so many things in our experience are immaterial that the naturalistic worldview falls apart because it's so reductionistic and doesn't allow for the immaterial. Okay, okay. So we're gonna, we'll talk about that in just a moment. I want to put a pin in that. No, I want to dive into that right now. The naturalistic <laughs> position means start the debate. Start. We, we don't assume magic. We know that we both know there's a natural world. We both accept that there's a natural world. You want to posit that there's also a magic alternative of reality. I don't make that assumption. And because I don't make that assumption, you label me a naturalist and you call mine the belief. Not yours. Yours is the belief. You have the belief that there's a magical alternative reality. I don't make that assumption. So you label me the belief and you tell me that I have to defend my belief in you not being correct about your belief. Yes. You have so many belief presuppositions. It's scary. I don't have the presupposition. I don't have any. Fighting for human rights. Fighting you for do. justice. You believe in the virgin birth of the universe. At least I have no, a woman who was a virgin. I don't believe there was a virgin. I don't believe there was a virgin. I have a, a woman. I have a woman who was a virgin. You have nothing that was a virgin. I don't and everything have any. Popped I don't have existence. a birth. I exactly. There are so many things you take by faith. It's scary. Yeah. I don't have a belief at all. You I don't think you have a whole bunch of things. I don't believe. I don't think you have faith. You have endless amounts of beliefs. I don't have beliefs. Name Why did one Matt, thing I believe. Last time Matt and I debated, he said he has endless amounts of beliefs, but does not okay. have am faith. I, am I Matt? You are not Matt, but you I'm getting to the point. notice a slight difference in our hairstyle. <laughs> the, the dogs are a giveaway, too. Yeah, Matt hates dogs. Yeah. So, so I'm not so going to argue Matt's position. No, no, no. There was a reason I brought that up. You told me. And you there was a reason. And I just want to point out how many times you interrupted that statement because there's always people in the chat that say that I'm the one interrupting. I realize I do interrupt and I try to curb that. I'm trying to but, catch you guys. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that no, was no, a bunch of interruptions right there. <laughs> I don't believe any of the things that you just said. And you just admitted to the shifting of the of the burden of proof fallacy. So you're, you're, you have a belief that there's this alternative reality that I don't assume. We both accept that there's a real reality, with it, we, you know, the one that we know. But you also suggest that there's another one. The burden, is uh, per, the burden of proof is on the one making the positive claims. Why await your proof and all instead of substantiating your 
weird assertion, your baseless assertion. You then criticize me for not being able to disprove you because you can't substantiate your position. And you think that's justified. Wait, this, wait, This might be wait, an opportunity. Wait. Well, if you there are do, endless like, amounts. A quick, Sorry. pithy response. And then, yeah. Arn, if you want to go or we got to wrap it up there, pretty quick. I, I, I am so Q&A. tired of the new scientific definitions on morality that atheists are getting. I'm so tired of the different versions of multiverses. I'm so tired of Did I mention any of, of that? What, did so, any of that have anything to do with what we were just talking no, about? No, no, yes, I'm getting to it. I'm getting to it. I'm getting to it. It just shows how much magical thinking is getting put in place by, on both sides. On both sides. I, I would agree there's a lot of magical thinking that people Excuse me, there's no the magical Christian thinking aid. on my side. But I think the whole issue is that, again, you have the burden of proof as well, because we're both making claims to knowledge here. I don't we're mind both making claims to I knowledge. I don't mind living up to the burden of proof for anything that I actually hold true. Good. I can do that. You can't. And the, can't. Things, the things I mentioned when it came to beliefs, you cannot take an empirical hard stance and test it in a lab that here's why we should live for justice and human rights. Yes, here's how... Here's how somehow this place popped into existence. Here's why, for I example, I don't believe anything ever. Here's popped why, into for existence. example, that's one of the beliefs you pretended that I have that I don't have. What? Which one? I don't believe anything ever popped into existence. You do, but I don't but you believe, believe it what forever. you do. Do you believe don't it exists forever? Me for you believing that? If you believe it's eternal, then then I take it back. I believe it's eternal. You believe the universe is eternal. I had an interview with a number of, of cosmologists, including uh, 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 not just Sean Carroll, but also uh, Lawrence Krauss, no, the, the, the author of A Universe from Nothing. He doesn't actually believe the universe came from nothing. So what I've gathered from all of the cosmologists that I've talked to is that even in, and that there are multiple models here, nobody actually knows for certain you know, what, what the, 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 when you get right down to the grid of it. Uh, they're very, very confident after the first second. But prior to that, nobody really knows. That's what I'm getting. I could be wrong about that because I don't do cosmogony. I don't uh, cosmogony. I don't care. I literally don't care whether or how the universe had a beginning. I don't certainly don't have a belief about things that I don't care about. But what I've gotten from cosmogonists is it is even in models that have a singularity, that singularity is eternal. It does not matter whether or if or how the universe had a beginning. But what I'm hearing is that it didn't. This might be a good opportunity.